Super Monkey Ball is what kickstarted this channel, so it feels like high time to finally rank every game in the franchise. I won't be counting arcade, mobile, or flash games, but with that, let's get her ranked. 12. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz While this may have been the best-selling Monkey Ball title, as well as a launch title for the Wii, the main gimmick, as you'd expect, is motion controls. Banana Blitz runs a mile with that gimmick and incorporates it into the entire game. And when I mean the entire game uses motion controls, I mean everything. The freaking menus force you to twist your wrist for navigation. Even in 2006, this was really annoying. Why not at the very least have pointer controls instead? At least that's more natural and accurate. Look at this, Ai's holding the Wii Remote on the box art. Yeah, I get it, the game has motion controls, thank you. But on to the game itself. There's 10 worlds to unlock, as well as the usual bonus stages, and even bosses. Yes, there's boss fights of Banana Blitz, and unfortunately, they flop kind of hard. While I love the designs of these bosses, and the cutscenes that introduce them are great, the entire experience is ruined by the controls. The bosses are very easy, and after spamming your jump attack enough, you'll take down most of them. Now, in order to move, you tilt the Wii mode around in your hand, and you can also press A to jump. Inherently, this sounds like a natural evolution to Monkey Ball. And the first few worlds are kind of fun. The music's really jamming throughout the entire game, it's pretty solid. And it even goes for a different feel compared to the originals. Instead of having synthwave energy, this one is kind of more K-pop-ish, and I think it works well. The characters themselves have also gotten redesigns, and while I used to hate how cutesy the game looked, I think this style is aged much more gracefully than the GameCube titles. But anyway, you'll notice Notice that once you reach World 5 and 6, the game starts to get a lot harder. And I mean much, much harder. Not that I'm that surprised, because this is Monkey Ball after all. It's well known for producing incredibly challenging stages. In fact, that's what makes playing these games so fun in the first place, is mastering the hardest stages. The only problem with Banana Blitz is the fact that I'm using the Wii Remote to control the game. And it's not like the physics are even that bad. The issue is that it's near impossible to have pinpoint precision, which is kind of a huge problem when you get to World 9 and 10, and you look at how narrow the tracks are, you look back at your we were remote in horror, and you're wondering, why was the game made like this? These tougher stages would probably be really fun with a normal joystick, but it's not an option. No, you are forced to use the remote. And I'm not a motion control hater. In fact, I use them all the time for aiming in Splatoon. But for this game... <sighs> And this isn't even the worst part of Banana Blitz. That award goes to the party games. In standard Wii fashion, you gotta have a billion party games because Wii Sports did it and everyone loved that. So instead of getting a handful of really solid party games, we get 50 crappy ones with little to no substance. Not a single game in here is replayable. And yes, I did try them all and it was quite the slog. There is maybe, I don't know, two or three party games that were okay, but I had no desire to replay them. I'll be getting to the HD remake of this in a little bit, but my god, this has to be one of the worst age Wii games out there. 11. Super Monkey Ball Adventure I've heard a lot of bad things about this one, so I was really dreading to try it. And now I've done it! I decided to play this on the GameCube because I can use the GameCube controller, and there's also a version on PS2 with slightly more content but worse controls, and there's the Xbox One! Oh wait, no, actually, wait, no, not Xbox, PSP! Yeah, there's a PSP version, and it's the only Monkey Ball game on the handheld. This is kind of like a weird fever dream, isn't it? But what's even stranger about the PSP version is that it has exclusive challenge stages. Yeah, there's 15 stages that you can only play on this handheld for some reason. But anyway, I'm procrastinating because I was not looking forward to the story mode. Before that though, is it just me or is the art style very muddy? It just doesn't have the same vibrant colors as the originals. I'm guessing this was done on purpose to change the tone and make things more serious, but I don't really think it works. So how exactly does the story mode work? Well, to boil things down, the objective is to complete a bunch of missions or side quests, while also playing through the usual challenge stages to unlock different parts of the world. There's five different worlds, all of them are fairly large, well, for the 2000s era at least. As for what kind of side quests we get, well, there's actually a decent amount of variety. Some of them involve collecting enough bananas and donating them, others are fetch quests to get balloons, sometimes you'll have to do mini races, it's the usual side quest shenanigans. And for the first world, Jungle Island, I would 
was actually having a decent time. It was nothing groundbreaking, especially since the controls are much less responsive, but things were going okay. But then came Moonhaven. What on earth were they thinking? Now, the world itself is incredibly cool. It's this massive gear theme place that's floating in the sky. Like, I genuinely love the theme, but for a game like Monkey Ball, this does not work at all. Get used to falling constantly, and the respawn points can be complete bullshit because sometimes you'll spawn super far away from where you actually fell, which is a major pain in the ass. That's why Moonhaven completely destroys Super Monkey Ball Adventure. The level is way too complicated and difficult to navigate, which negates the entire experience. As one example, there's a mission where you have to fly around and get balloons for this monkey, and it's extremely difficult to just get around without bumping into things and messing up. And if you fall, too bad, try again, idiot. Have fun trying to beat the same mission for three hours. This whole world is just one big massive chore and it's too bad because again the theme is really neat and even the narrative is pretty fun there's a bunch of new monkey ball characters and there's even new abilities you unlock new abilities by finding future ai and doing chance which is similar to ocarina of time or the wind waker and these are great ways of sprucing up the gameplay but the game even ruins this the best abilities speedball and hoverball aren't unlocked until the very end these two abilities let you go faster and hover in the air, which would have been godsends for Moonhaven. And also, what's up with the map screen? Like, yeah, it technically functions, I guess, but an outline of the stage would have been nice to include. And on top of that, this is one of those where do I go kind of games. There is no sense of direction for most of the adventure. Sometimes you have to complete half the missions and sometimes more. And there's really not much reward for completing missions anyway. All that really matters is getting bananas. There's a shop that you'll go to that unlocks characters, which in turn unlocks the missions. You can also use bananas to buy levels for the party games, but there's cheat codes that unlock all that stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter. So unfortunately, the story mode had a lot of potential but Moonhaven legitimately destroys all of it. As for the other content, challenge mode is back, but feels much more stripped down. The backgrounds aren't very fleshed out, the congrats screen is just text with a black background, and for some reason, the music is randomly generated for every level. The party games are the highlight, surprisingly, considering we can play as tons of characters from the story mode. Monkey Race controls well and has some fun new items, but every stage uses the same background. Monkey Target is also solid, the levels are more fleshed out and I was really digging it, but again, the backgrounds were all the same. Then we've got Monkey Fight, nothing to say about that, and then there's three new ones. Monkey Bounce is pretty cool, everyone bounces on tiles until they're all filled with your respective color. It was really fun, and I kinda wish they'd bring it back. Then there's Monkey Cannon, it's like this competitive Jenga kind of thing. You launch your monkey out of a cannon and hit the Jenga pieces for points. And Monkey Tag has you running around getting balloons for points. And that sums up Monkey Ball Adventure, an incredibly disappointing game that's filled with bugs and was clearly rushed to release. 10. Super Monkey Ball Jr. It's been said before, and I'll say it again. It's an absolute marvel that this game is running on a Game Boy Advance at all. The technical prowess it must have taken for this to work is beyond impressive, even to this day. But that doesn't change the fact that this game is pretty awful. In fact, it's one of the worst controlling Monkey Ball games ever. For starters, you get the usual main game where you play levels based on their difficulty. This time, it's way less levels, but that makes sense for the handheld this is on. But what's really fascinating about these stages is that if you've played the GameCube games, you can actually see that most of these are the same GameCube stages, but stripped down to their absolute core. It's the definition of a D-make. But beyond the technical marvel, it's not worth playing at all. The controls are just horrendous. I mean, just look at what we can use here. A D-pad, that's about it. So there's only so many directions you can travel, which makes moving extremely limited compared to a normal controller. And not only that, but the physics and collision are super janky. It's so easy to slip off from going too slow or suddenly flying forward, and you can't really track your monkey's speed because there's no visual indicator. If a platform is moving or rotating, your brain can't process what direction to move in. You kind of just start sliding in a random direction Direction. And you might survive if you have fast enough instincts. And you know what? I'd be okay with sloppier controls if the stages were toned down a bit on the difficulty. But this is old school monkey ball. So instead, we get some of the most frustrating, annoying, and brutal stages I've ever attempted. 
good luck with the majority of expert mode, and don't even get me started on master. It's just a bunch of bullshit. But thankfully, there is a cheat code that unlocks all the stages, so at the very least, you can try them all in the practice mode if you're morbidly curious. And I also appreciate that you can unlock unlimited continues, so if you really want to, you could spend several hours learning janky ass physics. Heck, they even crammed in a few mini games, but they're just worse versions of the originals. Monkey Fight feels a lot less chaotic, which is nice in its own way, but you can only punch in eight directions, so it's way harder to attack. Then Monkey Bowling is pure garbage, the pin physics just don't work like they're supposed to. Monkey Golf I kind of like, though. Again, the stages are way too hard for how the controls are, but I kind of got into this one. And then there's even an exclusive minigame, Duel Mode. Although it's not really a minigame. It's just like competitive mode in Monkey Ball 1. Even the way the music was done was impressive. It retains the fun energy of the originals, but just tones down on the extra sounds. So, all in all, one of the more interesting GBA games, but not worth playing unless you like pain. 9. Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll I'm very surprised to report that this is better than Banana Blitz, which uh, isn't saying much. Step and Roll in a lot of ways is very similar to Banana Blitz just by looking at its menus and art style, but at the same time, it's very different. For one, the menus no longer force you to twist the remote to navigate, thank god, you can just use buttons or pointer controls. The way the levels are built are very different as well, and it's not easy to spot unless you play both games back to back like I did. For one, the difficulty is much more fair, which is actually a good thing because we're still forced to move around with motion controls. Well, I still don't like that there isn't an option for buttons, at the very least the stages were built more naturally around the remote, considering there's less finesse with our movement. And second, the challenge almost always comes down to the timer. You'll notice that these levels are filled with tiki heads, and later in the game, the stages don't get super complex. It mostly just comes down to where tiki heads are placed, and how quickly you can navigate around them. Now, these heads look super awkward on the stages, but like I said, the challenge itself works a lot better. And plus, if you don't want to see them, just pull out your Wii balance board and play with that. Yeah, you can actually play step and roll with the balance board. It removes the tiki heads since moving with your feet is obviously going to be a lot harder. So while sitting down, this kind of works, but I wouldn't call it ideal. There's also only 70 stages, but I'd say in general, the stages are more enjoyable. We also see the return of warps and buttons, which is a welcome surprise, and the credit music absolutely slaps. And I don't just mean THE credit music, no, all seven of them. Because yes, every world has different credit music based around the song used in that world. While we can't skip these credits, I don't feel that inclined to skip because we're given a good reason to stick around. There's also some other modes like co-op play and marathon which is nice, and the mini games have been cut down drastically. Instead of 50 shitty ones, we have 21 uh, slightly less shitty ones. To be fair, it's more of a mixed bag than anything. Some mini games work well and are super fun like the skydiving one. That mini game had really solid controls and it was a fun concept, but then sometimes the controls just don't work. Like I swear to god they didn't fix red light green light at all. If you were to play any of the Wii Monkey Balls, I'd honestly say to play this one and then try the remake of Banana Blitz instead. 8. Super Monkey Ball 3D Underwhelming is the best way to describe this 3DS launch title. Monkey Ball 3D doesn't do much. In fact, it offers very little. You can experience every aspect of this game in a matter of two to three hours. There's 80 stages in two party games. That's literally all the content available. To give us some credit though, it does look and sound pretty nice. I like how some of the music and the visual detail in the stages is done. However, the blurry picture environments clash badly with the art style, and it takes away from some of the game's visual appeal. And the banana sound effects are so loud. <laughs> ah, like, could this not have been turned down a little bit? As for the stages themselves, there's nothing interesting here. For whatever reason, Monkey Ball 3D is afraid of being challenging. Which is kind of surprising, considering Monkey Ball is known for having dastardly difficult stages. Look at this, the entirety of World 1 keeps us trapped in literal gutters. Like, are you kidding me? Is this game meant for 5 year olds? Like, do you think we're gonna suck this much? Even the final levels in World 8 have guardrails. Like, Sega, come on, your fanbase wants a challenge. And that's not to say there aren't a few interesting 
interesting levels thrown in here, but the large majority of them are a snooze fest. As for the party games, they're straight up not worth playing. And look, I do want to point out that I applaud Sega for trying something completely new with Monkey Race and Monkey Fight. These games are totally different from every other Monkey Ball title. With Monkey Race, you're actually in a cart, and Monkey Fight is kind of like Smash Bros. So while I appreciate the change of pace, neither of these games are fun at all. Monkey Race, unfortunately, has pretty bad controls. The turning is painfully stiff, and you can only drift when you're going fast enough. What kind of sense does that make? And when you do pull off a drift, you're sent flying forward, which gives you no time to react to the speed boost you just earned, so you aren't incentivized to drift at all. But I do really love that the racetrack looks like actual tracks. That's pretty ambitious for Monkey Ball, but I just wish the controls were better. And then there's Monkey Fight. It's just a lousy clone of Smash Bros. Again, the controls feel really stiff here. You can't even pass underneath platforms, and the combat's just sluggish. So yeah, there's really not much of a reason to play this game. You're not missing much here. 7. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD this is exactly what this game needed. An HD remake that fixes just about all the problems the Wii version had. The controls completely destroyed the original, but now that we're using a joystick, the levels are actually enjoyable. I feel like I can go for the shortcuts this time because I have the precision to pull it off. Even the harder levels are much more gratifying. The boss fights are more the same thing, some of them are easier and some of them are a tad bit harder. But now that I can move around better, it's a lot easier to appreciate Banana Blitz. I still don't really care for the stage Ages, since they have a big focus on speed and linearity more so than puzzles or creative design, but I'm glad they at least tried something else. Banana Blitz HD even adds Sonic as a playable character, which is pretty neat. And then there's the party games. Uh, they're slightly better, I guess. They cut the list down again to 10 compared to the obnoxious 50 from the original, although it's very strange that Monkey Race and Monkey Fight aren't included at all, considering these are staples. But honestly, the party games haven't really been updated. In fact, some of them are worse. Dangerous Route feels very slippery for some reason, and the monkey target physics are way too floaty. Yeah, that's another common theme you might have noticed by now. Monkey target was only perfected in the first two games, and the other ones just can't seem to get it feeling right. But honestly, I had fun playing this one. I actually managed to beat all 10 worlds and finished levels without it feeling like luck this time. 6. Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll As soon as the game started with I.I. sticking his butt at me to touch, I knew I was in for something special. I thought I wasn't going to end up liking Touch and Roll because I assumed that we'd only be able to move with a touchscreen. But thankfully, you can use the D-pad or the joypad on the 3DS, and the game is very playable. The physics aren't perfect and the precision isn't quite as tight as I'd like, but I was having a lot of fun. The levels were just the right difficulty, and it had a really good flow for the most part. If there's one thing I can say about Touch and Roll is that it's very quirky. One great example of that is the credits. After playing a world for 10 minutes, you're stuck watching them for the next 3 minutes. Maybe there was a button I was missing, but I could not skip them for the life of me. It's strange there wasn't an option. And speaking of options, there isn't much of anything to customize. I couldn't even erase the old save data as far as I'm aware. And on top of that, there's no announcer voice. Which, you know, isn't a deal breaker or anything, but it just felt strange to not get yelled at. As for the levels themselves, I think what we got is this game's biggest weakness. A large majority of the stages are ported over from Monkey Ball 1 and 2, with only a small handful of them being brand new. And I get why they did that, because at the time, there was no way to play Monkey Ball 1 or 2 portably, but this choice makes this game have less of an identity. And to further injury, the new stages were really damn cool. Just look at the final one in World 10. We have to bounce off of these circle platforms to get a ton of air and land on the goal up here. That's just one of the many great stage ideas shown, so it's too bad that more of them weren't exclusive. A lot of the music is also remixed, but the main menu slaps pretty hard. I'm also a big fan of the graphics. The 3D levels and environments are a little rough, but they work well for being on the DS. But the highlight is by far the monkeys, as they're entirely in 2D. The bottom screen even has them on full display, and are super expressive based on how fast they're going. As for the party games, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, as you'd probably expect by now. And the main reason for that is because you're forced to use the touchscreen for almost all of them, which is really dumb. The option for buttons would have been nice. Monkey Race is just okay, the bowling is fine but has weird pin physics, Monkey Fight sucks a lot and would have really benefited from having the D-pad, and Monkey Wars could have been way better if you didn't have to turn with a touchscreen, but it's serviceable. The highlights here are Monkey Hockey and Mini Golf. 
Pocky has two options, one where you can draw your own puck, and the other one is more classic. This is a perfect use of the touchscreen and was pretty addicting. Then the mini golf was surprisingly fantastic. You aim where to shoot, and then you use the touchscreen to control the power of your shot. I kid you not, this just might be the most intuitive version of golf I've ever played in a video game. Because typically, I really hate the stupid bar that automatically moves in most golf games and just wish it were more straightforward. So yeah, touch and roll is a pretty solid game. I really wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. 5. Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits I had heard that this was one of the most underrated monkey balls, and now I totally get what everyone's saying. What I don't get though is Balloon Eye Eye on the cover, that's just a little strange, but sure you got my attention. And immediately, the menu is very striking and sticks out a lot. It goes for this techno-like metallic look, which doesn't really fit with Monkey Ball at all, but that doesn't matter. The gameplay and stages are where it's at. And outside of the first world that reuses old stages yet again, everything else is brand new and super impressive. The graphics look really damn nice. And same with the music and sound design. Can you believe that the monkey ball rolling sound effect is actually included? Wow, I can't believe it could be done. They did it. The controls don't feel perfect here, but they're precise enough to be able to tackle tough stages without it feeling like a chore. The way they utilize the background is really interesting too. So basically, each world has a very distinct background set piece, and at the end of each world, the set piece is added into the level itself. It's a pretty interesting idea that I haven't really seen from a video game at all. The only thing that I wish was included was a live top map screen, but most of the levels aren't vertically based, so it doesn't end up being that big of a deal. But what about the mini games? Monkey Target, par usual, has janky physics that don't work. All I can give props for is that the flying is okay, but once you drop down, you slowly float down and it doesn't feel very good. Then there's Monkey Bingo, it's fine. You just fall into holes and try to get a bingo. Monkey Bowling uses the touch screen, so now it's stupid easy to win, which I'm kind of fine with. Monkey Rodeo is a neat one. You'll use the rear touchpad and you'll launch your monkey around to get bananas. It's a fun idea, although it can be tricky to figure out where to tap, seeing as you can't see where your finger is. Then there's Number Ball. Uh, why in the world did they bring this minigame back from Banana Blitz? Were they just obligated to include touchscreen-based minigames or something? At least it's more fun this time with a touchscreen compared to pointing. Then there's Battle Billiards. This is one of my favorites of the bunch. Everyone takes turns knocking some of their balls around, and the goal is to knock out the other players. It works super well, and I would love to see this return in the future. Then we've got Pixie Hunt. It's really stupid. You just take a picture and have to collect pixies that appear. Again, it just feels like they're forced to use the beta's features. But then there's Love Maze, and this is an awesome one. You control two monkeys at the same time and have to get through a maze without getting too far apart from each other. This could almost be turned into a main mode. It's a basic concept that has a lot of potential. So while the mini games were a huge toss-up in quality, there was definitely a few good ones, and the main game is a lot of fun. So definitely not the best monkey ball, but one that's worth trying. 4. Super Monkey Ball, the original one that started it all. Well, on consoles at least. If Banana Mania hadn't come out, this would have easily been in the top three. And even nowadays, I can still sing this game's praises because it's a ton of fun. What makes this one so much better than the others we've brought up is the controls. The GameCube versions in particular absolutely nailed the feel and physics. Whether you're playing on beginner, advanced, or expert, the stages are just a blast to run through. You can stop on a dime, easily turn and adjust yourself, the game's general flow from level to level is fast, the music is upbeat and energetic. This is genuinely such a joy full game. I cannot understate the overwhelming bliss I get every time I pop in Monkey Ball. I also love the fact that you can't jump because it forced the stage designers to be creative. And as you might have noticed, this is a big problem with the modern Monkey Ball titles, where all the stages are just kind of bland and uninspired, while this game goes absolutely bonkers. And the reason they can do that is because of the controls and how precise they are. On top of the main game, you've got a handful of really fun minigames too. Monkey Race has an age great. They make you move slightly faster, which makes turning way more difficult than it needs to be. So Monkey Race is just okay, but I do enjoy the tracks and items you can use. Monkey Fight is a classic as well. It just feels so satisfying pummeling your monkey pals across the arenas. And Monkey Target, oh yes. This and Monkey Ball 2 are the only times the physics have ever felt right for this. It's fun to simply fly around. You can grab bananas and items in the sky. There's a nice selection of target areas to hit. The physics actually work. It's just a fun ass time. Man, I'm telling you, I play 
did so much monkey target with friends as a kid. You really can't go wrong with this mode. And the other smaller mini games are solid too. Monkey Billiards is just a really fun billiards with a few different modes. Monkey Bowling is kind of awkward because you have to time out which direction you'll throw in, but it's not too bad. And Monkey Golf is a very chill one. It's what you'd expect. The one huge problem with Monkey Ball 1, however, is the life system. If you want to unlock the extra stages in each difficulty mode, you have to clear every stage without using a continue, and you only get a few lives, which means that if you want to unlock the master stages, you have to complete 50 expert stages and then extra stages after that without using a continue. That is some actual bullshit. And sadly, it hurts the game a lot. Unless you're already really good at Monkey Ball, you'll probably never be able to experience a good chunk of the stages. But even still, this game is worth playing for the party games alone, and Beginner Slash Advanced is still a great time. 3. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania I'm honestly stunned that this remake exists at all. A collection of every Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Deluxe stage in one game? A character roster with virtually every Monkey Ball character, plus Sonic and other Sega franchises, and even a Sega Game Gear? And there's brand new game modes on top of that? Oh, and then you're gonna hit me with this song when opening the game? Hello, 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 Sega, it's not my birthday. I don't deserve all this. Everything about Banana Mania caters to my Monkey Ball interests, and I absolutely love it. But this game isn't number one on this list. But why could that be? Well, the main reason is that the controls still aren't as precise as they are in the GameCube. With that said, though, the majority of people probably don't care that much and think that what Banana Mania has is acceptable, and I do agree to an extent. The issue, however, is when you get to the more challenging levels. When you start trying to move across really narrow platforms, it's very challenging to do because you have less of an access of movement. The camera swivels around all over the place. It makes some stages way harder than they need to be. And that's a big problem when you're bringing back the master stages from Monkey Ball 1, some of the most brutal levels we've ever gotten in the franchise. But Sega gave us a band-aid solution to the controls, and that is the jump. Now, jumping is nothing new in Monkey Ball, we've seen it before, but having it in the original stages is very surreal. And honestly, the jumping is what makes this game so great. All because it can be exploited so easily. If you consistently jump while moving forward, your speed will continue to get faster and faster, which means that you can jump over massive chunks of levels if the circumstances are right. Being able to break these stages so hard is just hilarious, and it makes Banana Mania worth playing. If jumping weren't included, I don't think I'd be bothered to get to the toughest levels. There's also a lot of accessibility features, which is a great touch, and I kind of like the helper function because you can slow down the gameplay. I imagine a lot of beginner players found this to be super helpful because these stages get really hard. But what about the party games? Well, Monkey Race is uh, shockingly fantastic. In fact, I'd argue that it's the best version of this mode, period. It has all the Monkey Ball 1 and 2 stages, and the controls feel really tight. Monkey Fight is still fun, but Monkey Target, uh, <laughs> say it with me, everyone. Monkey Target, S-U-C-K-S, it sucks still. Oh, they messed it up again. The physics are once again awful. It feels just like the other games where the ball falls way too slowly, and you lose speed like there's no tomorrow, and it, it it's just really disappointing, and so bizarre because every other party game is pretty solid. Why couldn't they get this one right? In terms of the other mini games, there's not much to say about them that hasn't already been said. The only weird difference is with Monkey Bowling. For whatever reason, spinning is now super sensitive, so if you mess up the direction of your throw, you can much more easily recorrect yourself. And I also really like the extra modes too, although they're not as deep as I was hoping. Reverse has you play through a handful of stages in Reverse, Dark Banana kills you if you touch a banana, while Golden Banana requires you to collect every banana. You know, I gotta wonder if the developers were inspired by YouTube creators such as myself or Nico BBQ. Wouldn't it be hilarious if my dumb Monkey Ball Challenge videos helped inspire these modes into existence? My only issue with these is that they're all very short. Only a small handful of stages are included in these modes. And I kinda get it, not every stage would work well, but I don't know, it would've been cool to see a little more content included because the game modes are really refreshing. And also, so, why the hell were some characters delisted? You can no longer play as Morgana, Hello Kitty, or Suezo. That's a little bit disappointing, but not the end of the world. This could have easily been the best Monkey Ball game of all time if the controls were just replicated from the GameCube titles, but beggars can't be choosers. I'm incredibly glad this game exists, and have high hopes for the future of this franchise now. 
2, Super Monkey Ball 2. This is and will always be my go-to GameCube game, even more so than Smash Bros or Mario Kart. Ask any of my friends that have come over. I will always suggest that we play Monkey Ball 2, and sometimes they say yes and I'm very happy. But onto the game itself, Monkey Ball 2 fixes the biggest problem that Monkey Ball 1 had, the life system. The experience points this time around can be used to unlock minigames, of course, but also to unlock more lives. This is a great system, because while playing the harder courses, you'll naturally get better and better at them, while also getting more and more lives, so you always feel like you're moving forward. Completing Expert and Master Mode is actually feasible this time, because if you get stuck on a few stages, it doesn't really matter if you've gotten 99 lives before getting to a continue. The levels themselves are also at their best. They're still brutally difficult near the end, but most of them feel fair if you practice enough. So on top of fixing the life system, we've also got an entirely new story mode. All it really is, though, is a bunch of cutscenes with a set number of levels in between, so it doesn't really feel like much of a story, especially because the story itself is so freaking cheesy. The plot is basically this monkey, Dr. Bad Boon. He takes all the bananas. Oh, wow, what an evil monkey he is. And this is one of those games where the cutscenes are so bad that they're just awesome. And then on top of that, we get every previous minigame times two. This is a ton of minigames, but they're probably the worst part of the game. But let's just start with the positives. Monkey Race feels like it's been tweaked a bit when it comes to the controls. You still roll abnormally fast, but the turning feels a bit more responsive, and the stages themselves are still great. Monkey Fight and Target is more of the same thing, but I like Monkey Billiards a lot more than the first game, and that honestly just comes down to the music. Is that not the most billiards music you've ever heard in your life? And then on top of that, you got I.I. drinking some milk in the background? Best game ever, like I said. Monkey Bowling is again more the same, although funny enough, if you pick Baby, then the movement cursor is a lot slower. As far as I'm aware, this is never explained, so you kinda just have to stumble onto this yourself. And that's about where the fun stops. All the brand new mini games are welcome additions, but are just kinda whatever. Most of them just don't control very well, but at the very least, a lot of effort was put into these as they're all filled with plenty of customization. Monkey Boat is probably the worst new one. Like, I'm sorry, but just trying to paddle forward does not work at all. I love the inclusion of items and the stages are neat, but I can't play this one. Then there's Monkey Shot. It's okay. It's an on-rail shooter, which is kind of weird for a Monkey Ball game, but it's fine. Monkey Dogfight is an aerial shooter, and honestly, I've always been really crappy with these kinds of games. I always just feel like I'm shooting at nothing and aiming is just impossible. But it is a clever way of reusing assets from the main levels, so I'll give it that. Monkey Soccer is also just fine, but it's really basic and isn't that interesting. Then there's the monkey baseball, and that one's kind of all over the place. The pitcher is the ball at the same time, so it's incredibly easy to juke out whoever's batting. When playing this with people, I don't mind this one. And finally, there's monkey tennis. Again, it's just tennis, and it's alright. But clearly, a ton of love was poured into Monkey Ball 2. Like, I could legit be a Monkey Ball 2 YouTuber if more people actually cared about this series. 1. Super Monkey Ball Deluxe I had my doubts, because for years I had only ever played this on the PlayStation 2. And that version is awful because the physics are completely ruined. But what about on Xbox? Well, I think it speaks for itself based on where it is on the list. This has every Monkey Ball 1 and 2 stage combined, plus 47 exclusive stages. That is simply incredible, giving us a grand total of 310 stages. I mean, talk about bang for your buck, especially back in the 2000s when this was released. Even the story mode has been vastly improved in one simple manner. Since there's so many extra stages, you can pick from 20 to play per world. And what's awesome about that is if there's a stage you're stuck on or if there's something you simply don't want to play, you don't have to do it. You're still only required to clear 10 stages, so story mode is way more accessible than ever. There's also an ultimate mode that you can unlock, which is a massive marathon of every single stage in the game. This is definitely not for the faint of heart, but I just love that it exists still. There's something so ominous and powerful about the fact that this mode makes you sit through 300 plus stages. It's so cool. But what about the controls? Well, they still aren't quite as precise as they are on the GameCube, but the physics are virtually the same, and even on harder stages, it's about the same difficulty. The only difference is there's a little less precision with fine-tuning your direction, but it's really not that noticeable. And then there's the party games. They included all the content from Monkey Ball 1 and 2, which again is just crazy. There's now tons of monkey racetracks, all the monkey target stages, mini golf and golf, plus everything else you'd expect. 
The only truly bad thing I can say about this game is that the ball rolling sound is missing, aside of occasional wobbles here and there. It's so weird how most Monkey Ball titles don't have the ball rolling sound, because it adds a lot of visual feedback when you're playing. But even so, this game is truly worthy of the title Deluxe. Just make sure to play it on Xbox, don't even bother with the PS2 variant. Despite Monkey Ball having a bit of a rocky history, I have faith that the next game in the franchise is gonna hit it out of the park. <laughs> well, I hope at least. But with that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all soon.